Skarner Hotfix buffs have hit live servers, Camille is back in meta for top lane, and Lux is actually a powerful mid laner for the first time in a while. So in today's video, we'll be providing you guys with an updated tier list for every single role in patch 14.7. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to stay up to date so you don't miss out on next week's changes. And remember, if you're struggling to climb in League, Skill Capped is the only place that guarantees you'll climb at least 5 divisions while actively using our service. Otherwise, you can claim a full refund. We do this because our service really works, and this is the best time of the season to get in on Skill Capped, as we've just released tons of site exclusive courses designed for you to power learn the most important concepts for climbing in League of Legends stupidly fast, compared to those who don't use Skill Capped. Join today for unlimited access to the world's most famously effective League of Legends guides, and remember, one subscription gives you access to all of our other games as well. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below to stop wasting time being hard stuck and get the rank you actually want. And with that said, Let's get into it. Despite Camille's support becoming weaker for 14.7, top lane Camille has actually become much stronger and is a top tier pick once again. Top lane Camille is now stronger because Riot increased the scaling on her Q. Cooldown is now lower at max rank and the movement speed is now greater at max rank. Top lane Camille maxes Q out first every game and can reach level 9 much faster than support, which is why top has benefited way more. Max health damage on W was also increased and top lane Camille will be playing into a lot of matchups that stack health, so it's a more positive change for top compared to support. So we'll be giving Camille an added bump up the tier list for 14.7, going from A into S tier. The top lane tier list will remain pretty similar to where we had it for pre-patch with a few minor adjustments. Top lane Rek'Sai has lost a bit more strength than we had originally expected, so she's going to be moved from S into A tier. Laning phase of the champion is definitely much more exploitable now due to the reduced healing from passive and less fury stacking from hitting minions. We were optimistic the changes wouldn't reduce the champion's strength too much because it was literally just a single patch to where Rek'Sai top was strong. However, However, it looks like Riot just doesn't want her to exist as a strong top lane champ. Despite Olaf's W and R now costing more mana in 14.7, the win rate of the champion has actually gone up for top lane. W bonus attack speed duration was increased from 4 to 5 seconds, so it looks like that change is outweighing the increase in mana. Of course, the bonus monster damage on Q and reduced cooldown on E when hitting monsters don't completely go to waste for top lane Olaf either, since when he's helping with Dragon or Baron, those will come into effect. So even though we were skeptical of Olaf's strength as a top laner going to the patch, he will remain in the S tier. Fiora and Nastas changes have landed as we expected, so they won't be needing any further adjusting on the tier list for mid patch. Fiora lost a bit over 1% to her overall win rate from the nerf, while Nastas gained a little over 1%. If we move on to the jungle now, let's start off by covering the Skarner rework. Initial reactions to the rework are that the champ does feel on the weaker side and a bit clunky to play. The new mechanic on Skarner's Q to where he's able to pick up a rock feels kinda bad since it locks you in place while you're picking it up, and then you even have to wait a bit to throw it after you picked it up. If the pickup time were faster, or if you could just throw the rock immediately after picking it up, that would definitely make the champ feel much more smooth to play. New Skarner R is definitely more difficult to use than the old one as well, so there's a steeper learning curve to rework Skarner in comparison to old. If you guys have played any Skarner this patch, let us know what your initial reactions are in the comments below. As with any new champion release or rework, Skarner started off with an absolutely abysmal win rate, 38% on release to be exact, but we really can't look into that very much. For instance, Smolder literally had a 43% win rate on release, but ended up up climbing to over 50% within a few days. To be fair though, 38 is a lot lower than 43, so even if the champ were to follow the same trajectory as Smolder, he'd remain a bit underpowered. Riot has gone ahead and issued some hotfix buffs as they feel the champion needs a boost. Mana growth has been lowered, passive monster damage cap is up, while Q monster damage cap is up as well. W mana cost is being increased while E cooldown is being reduced. So mainly changes to help out Skarner's clear speed and nothing in regards to quality of life adjustments just yet. Now there is some optimization that can still be done to help boost Skarner's viability. With all the health scaling in Skarner's kit, Heart Steel is performing the best as a rush item. Every single one of Skarner's basic abilities scale off of health, so players are definitely sleeping on Heart Steel right now, as it's only being purchased in 9% of games. It's winning about 3% more than Sunfire Aegis, which is quite significant. The three item core of Heart Steel, Sunfire Aegis, and Iceborne Gauntlet is winning the most so far. For Skarner's tier list placement, we'll be dropping him in B tier to start, as we do think there's a lot more to be desired at this point. Moving on to the jungle tier list now, the patch had very minimal impact on the meta. Volley Bear nerfs didn't really do a whole lot in reducing his power level as he's still a really great jungler and being placed in the S tier. Briar is now taking up the only OP tier slot as she's heavily outperforming in Diamond and Below. Rek'Sai changes did not impact the strength of the champion in the jungle very much at all, so she continues to be placed in the S tier. Olaf buffs have landed a little weaker than we originally expected as we had initially placed him in the B tier for the pre-patch tier list, but we're going to be adjusting him into C for mid-patch. Silas buff, on the other hand, has played out to expectations as the change 
range was not enough to pull him out of the C tier. Now, one major change we're making to the jungle tier list is rating Kane based on his two forms. So we'll have a blue Kane and red Kane ranking on the tier list from now on. The reason we're doing this is because last patch we ran into a situation to where blue Kane was significantly weaker than red Kane, so it made it much more difficult to accurately place the champion on the tier list. Now that blue Kane has been buffed in 14.7 and players have dropped Profane Hydra from their build path completely, blue is performing much better. With that said, red Kane is outperforming, especially for the lower elos, so we're going to be placing red one tier higher than blue. Red in general is just more consistent and easier to execute, and the build right now involving Eclipse is giving him a lot of power as the item is just way too good. Mid lane is going to be getting one new addition to the OP tier for mid patch as we're bumping up Diana. Diana mid is getting a lot more attention right now and with her play rate increasing as of recent, her win rate continues to remain extremely high. Generally when a champion sees a play rate spike, their win rate takes a dip due to unexperienced players picking up the champ. But that has not been the case with Diana which analytically points to a very strong champion. Even pros like Showmaker have started picking the champion back up in solo queue. Diana was buffed in 14.6 and with her meta build revolving around Lich Bane, she has a super strong one item spike to play for. Lich Bane is still an extremely powerful item and it's not a surprise that the two most OP mids in the game being Ari and Diana are both abusing it right now. Diana has always been a very underrated counter pick to many melee mids in solo queue as she's winning over 52% of the time against Zed, Silas, Katarina, Yone, Kiana, and Fizz. Just playing around W shield makes it very difficult for those champs to trade back against her. Her first few levels can be a bit of a pain in range matchups however once Diana gets level 6 she has the ability to one shot those squishy range mids very easily. Now if you want to learn how to climb ranks fast in mid lane then there's nothing better than our brand new mid lane course at skillcap.com. It has the A through Z of everything you need to know to climb as a mid laner. This covers everything from trading to macro to team fighting and anything else you can possibly need from a mid laner's perspective. It's nearly an hour's worth of content we've spent a very long time on. You can check it out risk free with the link below. So if we're moving on to looking at the mid lane tier list we now have Ari and Diana locking down the OP tier spots. We noted in the pre patch tier list that Lux could enter the realm of being a fringe S tier pick due to her buffs and we've decided to move her up for mid patch. Lux and Galio were the only mid lane champions changed for this patch so there's not a whole lot else to report for the role. We moved Galio up into the A tier for the pre patch tier list due to his buffs and we like that placement with how the analytics have showed up. Smolder was the lone ADC buff for 14.7 so very much like mid lane the meta has remained very similar to where it was last patch. Smolder buffs ended up adding on about 2% to his overall win rate but even with that change he's still underperforming compared to most ADCs and will remain in the B tier. Big change for ADC in 14.7 was the nerf to static shiv and that adjustment has led to a few champions dropping in power. Zeri and Aphelios were two champions negatively affected the most by the change and we're going to be pushing each of them down one tier for mid patch. OP tier is going to see a minor change for this patch as we're bumping Kog'Maw down to S and just leaving Jinx as the standalone OP pick. Every single metric is pointing towards Jinx being a cut above everyone else right now as her win rate, play rate, and ban rate are all excessively high. As for the shiv rush on ADCs like Jinx, Aphelios, and Kai'Sa who have the Kraken alternative, it does look like Kraken is just the way to go now. Due to the shiv nerfs, Kraken is now winning over 1% more than shiv on those champs so it doesn't look like there's much reason to prioritize static shiv anymore. The huge draw to shiv was the fact that the item was so cheap but now that it's only 100 gold cheaper than Kraken there's little incentive to build it as the passive proc from Kraken is just way stronger than shiv in a skirmish. Moving on to support now, changes that we expected to be negative that have actually turned out quite positive were the adjustments to Nami. Damage on Nami W and E were reduced while Mandate was nerfed as well but the buff to Nami's W healing and bounce fall off have outweighed those nerfs. Nami ended up gaining about 1.5% to her overall win rate for this patch so the changes have been extremely positive. Mandate nerfs haven't seemed to hurt very much at all so we definitely overestimated the effects of that change too. So as a result of the adjustments being net positive for Nami she's going to be bumped into the support S tier for mid patch. Besides the Nami adjustments we were pretty spot on with our predictions as to how the changes to Camille, Sona, and Karma would land. Camille has taken a decent hit this patch but the nerfs were not enough to completely remove her from meta so she remains in the support A tier. Sona has been seeing a lot more success in 14.7 especially for the lower elos as her win rate has spiked up to 3% in bronze, silver, and gold. This makes sense because it was the AP ratio on Sona's W that was buffed quite significantly and in low elo games tend to last longer so the value you're going to get out of that buff is higher the lower rank you go. The changes to Karma have ended up landing pretty neutral as even though she was directly buffed the nerfs to Realm Spike and Mandate have made it so that those direct buffs didn't really do much. Especially now that Sona and Nami are way better for this patch while Janna, Lulu, and Melio are in pretty good spots right now too there's really no reason to prioritize Karma if you want to play an Enchanter. Janna is going to be moved back up into the OP tier for mid patch as the Mandate and Realm Spike nerfs just didn't hit very hard at all. Dream Maker is however performing at a very equal level to Realm Spike on Janna now so you can 
can swap between the two based on the game. If you're able to snowball early game and your ADC is quite fed, then going for Dream Maker to just buff them up even more is definitely the play now. Alright guys, one last thing, our rank up guarantee is insane. It's like signing up for the gym and getting a refund if you don't get ripped. That's how confident we are in skill cap. We obsess over making the best guides with top players, rigorous testing, and top tier video editing to make your climb easy. If you're ready to level up, visit skillcap.com and see the difference. So there you have it guys, a quick update on the meta as we reach the midway point of 14.7. Thank you all so much for watching, we'll see you back soon.